It may look like paradise, but coastal erosion, sinking islands, food shortages, and disease are warning signs of climate change that threatens the existence of our Pacific islands. Back from a recent trip to Samoa, former broadcaster and Otara Papetuatua local board member for Anana Efeso Collins talked to Pacific Media Watch about climate change in the island nation. So the children in Samoa are talking about what their future holds. So I think there's a whole lot of fear around whether or not they'll be able to have their own children and their own families and grow up safely in Samoa over the next few decades. And I think we've got to be aware of that because if they're starting to feel a little bit challenged and a little bit fearful about what the future holds, it's going to affect the decisions that they make long term, whether or not they'll be thinking, well, is it worth staying in Samoa? So I feel for the young people in Samoa. I feel for them because they're very fearful of their futures and what tomorrow might hold for them. When I was in Samoa, the Ministry of Health were acutely aware of um, illnesses like typhoid, dengue fever, which I, as I've said before are mosquito-based illnesses that you get you pick up a whole lot easier because of cyclonic activity. And so the Ministry of Health is saying, well, what can we do better? How much water can we drink? Where is there a lot of leftover water so that we can cover it up, dry out those areas? Because we know that that's where mosquitoes are going to be hanging around. Yeah, I think the key issue for New Zealand is how we look at this issue. Look, if our if New Zealand was sinking the way Tuvalu is sinking, it's being eroded in a hurry, there would be a very swift and sure response, both from New Zealand, Australia, the rest of the Commonwealth, in fact the United Nations would, would move with haste. This is not happening in the Pacific because I think essentially it comes down to the fact that we're, a, we're small island nations and people don't really care because it's not an issue that's directly confronting them. The Pacific is responsible for less than 1% of all global gas emissions and yet Western countries are moving so slowly at a snail pace to address these issues because they're not the ones whose land's being eroded at the moment. They're not the ones affected by the fact that they will have to be climate refugees in a little while. It's not just up to the Pacific media outlets to run these stories. Mainstream outlets have to pick this up as a major issue and we don't get TV1, TV3 talking about this particular issue. All they want to talk about is you know, issues around youth truancy and, and delinquency. We've got some major issues facing us with climate change and we've got to start addressing those issues. New Zealand can do it, we're a good community, we can care enough for each other and now it's just about us being relaxed enough to say, yeah, let's join together and support what's going on in the Pacific.
climate change when we have the sea level rise and most of the uh, low-lying uh, places without proper protection. You know the, this village, the river at the back and the sea in front of the house, then when the river and the sea comes, comes together, we hit the houses, no one can survive. After the cyclone, most of uh, the taro plants were washed by the river. They all uh, went to the sea. Before, people was used to live down here. This is the uh, mainland, where all the churches and all the families are. But uh, because of the uh, difficulties of the climates, people were thinking that uh, the sea will ruin everything. Exacerbated by climate change, coastal erosion is threatening the livelihoods of Samoan communities residing in the coastal zone, which is almost all of them, as coastal living is inextricably linked to the Samoan way of life, with many families living a subsistence lifestyle that depends on close proximity to the sea for their most basic needs. First thing is uh, they want to live near the sea where, where they can get uh, food, especially fish and uh, seashells. Yeah, not only for the food, but uh, to sell. If you have not enough money, you depend on the sea and the, and the earth uh, and the crown for, for the food. Given that 75% of um, government assets and uh, residential settlements are all within the coastal zone, having uh, some sort of a, a coastal protection mechanism in place uh, directly protects them. Vegetation comprises an integral part of a natural coastal buffer zone. The battering by Cyclone Evan revealed that some species are more resilient than others. There were other trees like fog, they were washed away by the by the, the waves. Yeah, those are the two which remain, the, the talia. Yeah. With the resilience of the talia and other species in mind, the Pacific Adaptation to Climate Change project is using vegetation to strengthen seawalls and protect communities at two pilot sites, Tafi Tuala in Opolu and Le Fanga Le'e in Savai. The identification of plant species well adapted to the coastal zone is a process that has benefited from community input and traditional agricultural knowledge. We ask around the local people, the old men and the women in the village, and uh, sort their opinion on what species that were growing there before. We have to, to find out what kind of plants that can be successfully grown on the, on the coast. It can uh, grow well in the salt-affected uh, areas, and that's how we selected those. It's not like some new introduced species, it's, they were always there. And uh, when we brought it to the communities, they were like, okay, um, it's widely available already, so we can just um, sort of like get the seedlings and do the planting. The forestry provide us uh, with these different kind of trees. This is called fetau. Fetau, fetau in Samoa, and they believe that uh, the roots of this kind of tree will grow deep inside the soil and helps to to maintain the soil, uh, to fix the soil and hold the land. This is what we call pulu, pulu, or just just as uh, same uh, class with the fetau. They believe that this is the good one for the coast and the coconuts over there. And as well as the talia, as you see far back there, that's talia, that's the talia over there. Yeah, we, we use those uh, mix of species, not only the trees with uh, big roots that can go deeper to, to firm the, uh, the soil, thus uh, uh, creating more strength for the seawall, but we also use some other plants that have their roots 
like spread on the surface that can be able to to support the, the rocks that we use for the seawall. By successfully combining local agricultural knowledge with cutting-edge sustainable coastal protection infrastructure, PAC is securing the livelihoods of Samoan coastal communities. I think uh, without the seawall then uh, there will be uh, much problem happen to us. If you can really care for your coastal environment, that will be your first line of defense for any kind of disturbance that comes from the coast. So we have a sea wall. So it is very important for us, especially for preserving our land. And that's why we still live here. We still, a lot of people in our church, in our village still living down here. PAC is working to help communities adapt to climate change with pilot sites in 14 Pacific Island nations. Supported by the United Nations Development Programme with funding from the Global Environment Facilities Special Climate Change Fund and additional funding from the Government of Australia. PAC is executed by the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme and supported by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research Climate Change Capacity Development Programme Exploring adaptation methods in three key areas. PAC is building resilience to climate change. 